Welcome to the Beyond the Breast channel. Here I have possibly the most stupid investment ever. I bought plastic rods with 3000 euros and you get two of these. So these are acrylic plastic. It's just regular plastic. It's transparent. And usually people don't need it this in this size rods, so it was pretty expensive to get. They had to specially make these two for us in the factory. They don't have this in stock. And what I'm going to do with this, you ask? I'm going to do transparent worm maker tool for my hydraulic press. I just decided that I need the tools. I called like plastic machining shop. I want to get these two tools. And they just said, no, you can't have those in that size. Then I called to next place. They said, yeah, those are impossible to make. And then I just thought like, I'm going to make them myself. How hard it can be? Because Timo said that it's really easy to machine this and it's like a piece of cake to do the tools that everybody says that is impossible to make. And uh, Timo just left and I got my 3,000 euro rods and I asked from Timo, hey, what is the special trick to make these? And Timo just said, eh, there is no special trick, just make them. I'm going to leave now. So uh, now we are going to figure out how we are going to make the tools and why it should be impossible. I think the hardest step is to invest the 3,000 euros in the materials without being sure that it can be done. But I'm pretty confident. We were able to make the uh, smaller transparent hydraulic cylinder back in the day. So this is just like harder version of that. Yeah. First I cut a couple pieces out of this. This is going to be the cylinder part where I'm, to, where I'm going to place the stuff. So we need to make like pot out of this. And then this is going to go inside of the cylinder. It's going to be the piston. So we need to make the attachment part for this and then drill the holes for the worms. And after that, we are going to polish it up and test it and hope that it doesn't explode on the first go. Okay, we cleaned up the saw and throw some cardboard there to protect this because we don't want to scratch this. I'm going to hope to keep the outer surface like clean so I don't have to touch that at all. And I think I'm going to start the cutting with the smaller one because this is cheaper. And in it goes. And I decide that I'm not going to make any pictures. I'm going to just eyeball everything. And now we have to decide how long pieces we are going to cut. And this is in diameter. This is like 260 and the hole is 200. Our hole is going to be 150. So it's a bit smaller and this is 70 millimeters deep. Hmm, I think we are going to mostly like do fruits and soft stuff like that. And that's going to be really expensive to manufacture. So the like worm materials are not going to be major expenses in overall. So should we go with the same depth as is this is? Yeah, so let's go with the 70. And then now, this is about, yeah, this is 550. So it's almost flush with this surface when it's all the way in. And now with this, we would have like a lot of visible like vermication happening here. You could see like what is going on on this distance. So I think we could do even more. Let's do 60 millimeters and also because it has to be pretty strong to survive. So let's go with 60 and then I think this is pretty good. That's 50 and that's 60. So 170 millimeters is the first cut. And then we are going to machine these shapes to here. So we're going to rem remove all of these. Yeah, let's, let's cut. 
Yeah, I'm going to cut the cardboard also. I think it's not going to matter there. Uh, I have to put something on that side. This is too long, it's going to flip. And like in overall picture, machining uh, materials that are like 3,000 euros, that's not expensive at all. I think we have done like pieces that are like two to 300,000 euros here. So this is not like exciting in that, that term. I'm not sure, does this need coolant or not? I think it's not going to need it. I'm going to see if the shavings look like that they are melting. Then we are going to need the coolant, but if it looks like it's like cool, then I'm going to go in dry. Seems to be like pretty cool. Okay, it's done. Yeah, it didn't crack. The saw surface quality is pretty rough, but does it matter? And it didn't, it looks like it's not tried to melt at all. So we were okay to go without the coolant. I was worried about the coolant because if we get like super small plastic savings with the coolant, I'm not sure what it's going to do for the system. So I didn't want to like mess it up with the plastic. So this part is now done and let's go to the lathe. Okay, I took small cut. I used really sharp tungsten carbide bit and it seems to work quite nicely. Even with this quite high feed rate, it looks really smooth and the plastic is flying everywhere. And that's not optimal because uh, we don't want to like have plastic everywhere. I'm not, I don't think it's going to end up ocean from our floor. We are cleaning here now and then. But if we get plastic everywhere and then you start to machine steel and the steel is very hot when it flies out the shavings. And if you mix really hot steel shavings with the plastic shavings, it's going to uh, smell really bad, release all kinds of fumes or get in fire. So uh, because of that, I want to like minimize the amount of plastic flying around. So we are trying to now like have vacuum cleaner here to suck everything away where it's been created. So with that, we can avoid that. So let's see how it goes. And I decided to try out this uh, hose attachment 5 million. The uh, plastic sprays on so many different directions that I thought that like wider thing is going to be easier but the airflow with that was like too slow or the air speed it didn't like suck in the stuff as well so just bare holes that works nice and uh, I think I took like 10 millimeter cuts per one go so about twice the amount that you can use on steel so it was about twice as fast to machined it out and there wasn't much of cracking or any problems at all. So easy and fast. Okay, and uh, also one good side of this tool is the fact that the uh, couple other press channels, I'm pretty sure that nobody is going to copy this idea. No matter how good this is, you have to be special kind of stupid to throw like 3000 euros and have all this to copy this tool without like any idea how popular it's going to be. So we can have this idea just for ourselves. Yeah, and I'm going to mount it using this chuck. It's exactly the same as the chuck on the lathe. You can just mount it here on the table. And with the milling machine, the most annoying thing is attaching these. It's really slow. 
because you have to like get like lot of different attachment things, then you need to take uh, take 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 this sit here. Like you have these things and these go to the slots on the table and then you can take these bolts and tighten everything up but it's like it's always really slow these are like the slowest lego bricks in the world and this is uh, this is like really easy setup because it's quite easy job we are only drilling usually there is huge forces so everything needs to be really tight and then you have to also think that is there surely enough room for the tools and like the actual machining happening. And I want to drill the holes before the polishing. Timo just said that I should do first polishing and then holes. But it's already there so too late. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to drill the holes because we had some cracking on the lathe. For example, the corners are pretty cracked from there. And we have to get quite nice finishing on the, the holes. Otherwise, Hanna is going to spend forever polishing those. So let's hope that it's going to go well. And we earlier today talked about how much holes we are going to have. And I think we are going to have just one, one row of the holes, because if you have two rows, it's going to be difficult to see what's happening when it's crushing. So just one row, and we want to make them relatively large, so we don't have to use super much pressure and explode our tools. So I think we are going to start like six millimeter holes and if that looks like shit then we can try with different type of tools to make them larger and get better finishing there okay we are going to use this drill and it's really good to have cool tool station with outboard motor in case the sea level rises <laughs> and you have to start to sail I have no idea what this does here but <laughs> there it is okay I took the wrapping out so it looks extra nice and I have hopefully my CNC program ready. So here we go, I'm too lazy. We are going to go in with the stupidly long drill without any starter holes because I will feel brave today. Oh, oh. Nyt se ryhtyy vaihtaa tätä vitun työkalua. My tool changer is broken slightly. Let's see, I accidentally changed the tool. Does it work? Holy shit! Uh, now we have slight problem because I never intended to put that tool in the changer. And I, I'm going to show what is the problem. Here is your problem. It's too fucking long. If it tries to pin, spin this, then it snaps. So, uh, I think this is tool number one. Uh, I think I'm going to play it sure and open this and get this out before uh, trying to put it in. Because if I mess up, then it's going to spin and break that. Okay, here we go. Uh, I messed up. Okay, now it's on the right place. 
And I have no idea what are good speeds for this, so I'm going to just like find out. Yeah, looks good. That looks really weird. Hanna, come have a look. Like, check here. The drill goes in. <laughs> and the hole, hole goes completely different place than the drill. <laughs> drill seems real. Yeah, that looks super weird. It's even worse when you look it from here. Check if you place the camera here. <laughs> that looks so weird. Yeah, but it looks to go pretty smoothly. And the savings comes out nicely. Was it all the way through? Yeah, it's all the way through. Okay, now we just wait. Okay, we tried to polish the drill holes, made even polishing tool for that, but they're just too rough, would take forever. So I'm going to take this, I'm not sure what this is in English, but it's like fancy drill. Mm. So I'm going to uh, go through the holes with this, and let's hope that this is going to make them smoother. I'm going to just like, just like, hand-handed. And it's stuck. Yeah, this is the trick. I think we can go from both directions. Mm. Uh. Ugh, smells terrible. Yeah, um... I cheated a little bit. And I read the instructions, and you are not allowed to let this heat up. If it gets hot, it's going to start to suck moisture from the air, and it's going to get moist. And when it's moist, it's not clear. But uh, this seems to heat it up a lot. But luckily, it's like airtight. When it's like this is like it's full of tool and savings the hole, so it doesn't get milky when. It's heats up, but let's be careful nevertheless. But the surface quality is going to improve a lot. We need to do this from both directions. It goes like two thirds of the way, and you have to every time do this. Yep. Then flip this all over. And here is my super fancy polishing tool. Steel rod with a like grinder cut on the middle. And then we take some shock, shock material. This is not used shock. 
It's a brand new sock that we sacrificed for the entertainment. Yeah, then some polishing shit. Spread the shit on the sock. And then push the shitty sock into the hole. Hey, check out how good it looks now. I think we need a slightly song longer uh, shit stick. Yeah. But otherwise this is like perfect. Okay, Hanna is polishing this. And this is now the uh, finishing compound. And I think they are going to be super, super nice. <coughs> okay, it's a new week. A new hope for the tools. I don't remember where we left. Yeah. I filmed the drilling part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I the first polishing round, it went to shit. Yeah, it went. It looked already really good after mm -hmm. the like uh, after the after first after stuff. That's the, uh, the cutting stuff. Cutting stuff. That was good. Mm -hmm. But then the uh, finishing stuff. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah, it ruined everything. Yeah, how it's looking now? It, it's looking great. I think you see here, this hasn't been like cut it and this is cut it. Yeah, there's some uh, stuff still inside. But when we get that out, it's going to look amazing. Yeah, finally. And then uh, you were... And then you went to get the uh, seals. Yeah. Morning, today morning from the like bearing shop. Yeah, because Laura said I had to go. And then we didn't know that Timo was getting some ball bearings still mm. earlier. And, and he bring those to us already. Yeah, the, so. uh, they, uh, those were here like all the time and I was driving around the city like some animal. And then I machined this. I'm not sure did I film at all, but it's just like remove material from here, nothing fancy. I think I used the GoPro. And now I'm going to throw this into the lathe and polish the hole. And I'll show this. And probably this. And then after that, we have to put these seals on. I have to make groove for this here. And I'm a bit worried about that. What? Is it going to crack or what's going to happen? And there isn't going to be super much material there. But I think it's okay. And this is really important. I, I, first I thought that it's not going to leak much without this. But then I realized that if it's leaking here, then the leaking mess is going to block the view. Mm. So this is really important to like have quite high here. So then the shit is going to be here, but not here. And you can see it into the holes. Yeah, yeah so a bit more polishing and machining. And then we are ready to test these out. Okay, the polishing is surprisingly easy. Only hard thing were the holes, but Hanna take care of those, so no worries.
Okay, this is the uh, last cut before the O-ring uh, groove. So almost ready. Okay, then we are going to make the O-ring groove. And I decided to use this high speed bit, high speed steel bit. It's uh, sharper than the tungsten carbide bit. And it's a bit softer, but it doesn't matter with the plastic. And also this is thinner, so we are uh, moving less material in one go. So I think that this is going to make it crack hard, like crack less. So this is uh, two millimeters wide and we have six millimeters thick o-ring. So we are going to make like, there isn't any like hard formula to this. I think we are going to make about seven millimeters wide groove. That's a bit thinner than it should be, but I don't want to make it too wide because all the stuff is going to clump there and it's going to be ugly as hell. Actually, just let's make six millimeters, six and a half. There should be like room to breathe for the o-ring, but uh, we don't want it here because it looks ugly. There is half a millimeter space between this and the cylinder. So we should make like, if we make five millimeters deep groove, then there, the o-ring is going to squeeze half a millimeter. I think it should squeeze more to get good seal. I'm going to make, I'm going to take eight millimeters out from the diameter, so it's four millimeters deep. And let's test after that. Holy shit! That was a bit too much. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, the first cut, that was nice. And now when we are cutting next to old cut, it's terrible. So I'm going to go there and make the left side also now. And then the middle part can like be whatever. It doesn't matter, but that's not, that's not optimal. Okay, let's fit. These are slightly smaller, just to make them like sit there tighter. I usually like to get these one or two size too small for these tools. Ooh, looks nice. It sticks, sticks quite much out. So let's test with the cylinder. Is it too tight? And if it's too tight, I'm going to just make it a little bit deeper. You can almost always go deeper, but can't go back when you have already removed the material. Okay, now they are ready. We are going to wash them, let them dry. Go to supermarket, buy some stuff. And then we are going to test it. And you are going to see it first here. Okay, and this feels really wrong. But uh, we are now going to put the magnificent art piece into dirty and brutal hydraulic press. It's so nice. Hanna has the like cotton gloves and everything. Yeah. You can plug it in. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. I have to say. Got me shivers. It looks expensive. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It is expensive. That's about like these are like these tools cost in materials and time about five thousand euros. So. Let's hope that they are not going to break on the first go. Mm -hmm. I limited the press pressure to 40 bars. So that's like 20 tons. Mm. And if you, if you take this sized piece of plastic and start to crush it and it explodes, explodes, 
it's going to take probably 100 tons. So if the cylinder doesn't crack, then these are going to last. But uh, we are going to now wash also the cylinder and throw it there and then we go. Okay, then I'm going to uh, oil the o-ring. I'm using just cooking oil. I don't want to have any harsh chemicals near my tools. So they don't like attack the plastic or something. But it has to have some lubrication, otherwise it's not, not going to work. It's ready. First thing that we are going to put there are grapes. Because with the short form videos, people really love grapes. It's like put grapes, get 100 million views. Just automatic. So we are going to start with that. They are also really soft, so they don't break this. Yeah, that's where.